Hello, everyone. A very good morning to all of you. Thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule to attend this session on consumer spending insights in India. To introduce myself, I'm Harsha, a global strategic solutions architect at SimilarWeb and your presenter for today. So before we get into the main part of the session, I wanted to briefly touch upon why this session is important and what are some of the topics that we are going to cover today. Also, if you have any questions during the session, then you can write them up in the chat and someone will respond to you or we can take them up during the Q&A session in the end. So in 2023, India's consumer spending surged and this is reflective of the fact that even after significant global challenges, India was one of the fastest growing major economies in 2023. India is also poised to become the third largest economy in the next seven years and is definitely on the path to become a developed economy. All of this, of course, is the result of India's manufacturing capabilities, service exports, and increasing consumer demand due to high, high household income. Also, India has a large population of about 1.4 billion, which is more than China now, and is set to contribute about one third of global workforce as there will be a significant amount of population in the age group of 18 to 35 years old in the next decade. All of these factors together with the high digital technology adoption showcases a very promising economic future in India. This year's Diwali season also saw higher online sales versus last year, indicating India's buoyant economy with higher purchase of items such as smartphones, TV, cars, among others. Also, one can't deny the fact that Chandrayaan 2's moon landing and Aditya l one solar exploration has really put the country at the forefront on a global map. So in today's session, we'll be covering online traffic patterns and customer acquisition tactics of three categories in e-commerce landscape, which is lifestyle, and under which we will cover fashion, beauty, and jewelry subcategories as well, consumer electronics, and fintech. And all of them have registered a good year-over-year -year growth in 2023 versus the previous year. Also, to give a bit of background on why these categories are important to explore, lifestyle, consumer electronics, and fintech products take up almost uh, one-third of total consumption pie in India. Most people in cash-rich cities of India are now moving towards healthier lifestyle, which involves investing in organic in ingredients, fitness, mental health, food supplements, and they all definitely cost way above the basic lifestyle choices. Similarly, electronic goods have captured the market with advanced technologies, be it air purifier or zero hassle juicer blender. With the creator economy booming on Facebook and Instagram, people are spending quite a bit on better smartphones, laptops, cameras, headphones, and other devices. The investment sentiment is also quite healthy in India owing to share prices going up, pushing a lot of people to use fintech products for their wealth and portfolio management. So all the data you would be seeing in the session today is from SimilarWeb, which is a very comprehensive digital marketing intelligence platform. And the platform has one of the best user interfaces, which makes it very easy for users to pull out data and insights from it to understand market landscape or competitor strategies. Now, before we get to the media part of the session, Let's do a few quick polls to keep the session a bit more interactive and gauge your knowledge on e-commerce in India. So moving on, just to give some context on the device usage in India, we all know that in India, smartphone penetration is one of the highest in the world with about 70 to 75% rate and it's estimated to be close to 96% in the year 2040. Similar web data shows that this is even more relevant for consumer electronics websites where more than 95% online traffic comes from mobile devices. And this is also relevant for beauty and cosmetics category as well. Hence, this reinforces the fact that mobile as a device should be at the forefront in any digital marketing campaign strategy to attract consumers. Now let's move on to deep dive into category trends, starting with lifestyle categories. And let's look at the online traffic trends over time. So what we see over here is that 
the online traffic to lifestyle industry in the first half of 2023 is on a positive track with most contributions and growth versus last year is seen to be coming from beauty category almost by around 9% and jewelry category as well, even higher by around 35% increase versus last year. What's more notable is that the jewelry category is seeing very robust increase in online traffic, even in August to October this year with about 24% growth. Again, this trend further highlights the positive sentiment in Indian economy with consumers willing to spend more on such items. And we see that even fashion and apparel categories sees marginal increase. Now, since we are seeing growth in jewelry category, let's deep dive further into it. So here, what we are seeing is that Tanishq is at the top spot in jewelry brands traffic share, getting close to 3.7 million visits on its website in 2023. But we do see lots of other brands as well getting significant year-over-year -year increase like Carrot Lane, Jiva, and Bluestone by more than 30%, which again shows that there is strong competition in this category. And the data suggests that the market leader should be aware of these brands who are growing quite strongly year-over-year. -year. When we look at the demographics of the visitors who are coming onto the jewelry sites, we see men are in majority, which again could be due to them still being the main breadwinner of the family. And of course, rise of the gender fluid jewelry could be spurring this trend as well. Also, it may be that the final choice in jewelry purchase is still partner or female led at the back end. But we do see that there are some brands that attract more female visitors on their sites uh, versus others, such as Carrot Lane and Jiva, which could be a result of their positioning strategy which are appealing to females in India. In terms of what are the demand trends within the category, Indians who traditionally have been into gold purchases and still are, as it's thought of as a safe investment instrument, do see some change in their jewelry taste with increasing demand for diamonds. So it's definitely reflecting modernism or globalism seeping into Indian jewelry habits especially with diamond engagement rings and wedding proposals becoming more mainstream in the Indian culture. Now, let's look at which marketing channels the jewelry brands are using online in order to acquire traffic and customers. So at an overall level, traffic is mainly driven via direct and organic search channels, meaning brand awareness and trust is important to consumers when they are making jewelry purchases. So when I talk about direct channel, it means that visitors are you know, clicking directly on the website, which could be because they know the URL of the website or they have bookmarked it. Organic search means that they type in the keyword in the Google for a particular brand and then go ahead and click the website link that the search engine throws up. But then there we do see that there are other brands like Jiva and Bluestone who are investing in paid search ads or PPC to increase traffic to their websites and of course brand popularity as well. Bluestone, as is visible over here at the bottom table, is also increasing investment in display ads versus last year. So for jewelry brands, this tells them where their competitors are spending money and where and in which channel they are increasing their investments and focus year over year. Now, if we look at share of voice that each brand gets from various trending searches in the category, then there seems to be some that stand out. For example, Carrot Lane seems to be getting a lot of traffic for earrings, while Jiva is getting more traffic for bracelets, showcasing that their paid search investment is around these items. Tanishq seems to be getting a lot of traffic from gold chain searches, while Bluestone gets a quite a bit of traffic from ring related searches. So this also gives us an idea into jewelry brands product focus strategies. And there seems to be an item that they are known for, but it also tells whether there is a white space to enter, for example, necklace, or whether there is a need to strategize to win against a competitor in a keyword or product that they are winning in. So there are a couple of use cases that jewelry brands can take away from this data. If we further look into Bluestone's display ad strategy, uh, which they are currently now focusing on, 
then the publishers that they partner with to place their ads are YouTube, IRCTC, Pokey, a gaming site, NDTV, and Craig Buzz. So all the sites that Indians will commonly visit, they're, they're partnering with them for their display ads. And in the images and the ads that they focus on are showcasing variety of small jewelry items like ring, earrings, and also certification. Price drop and money back guarantee is also highlighted in the images. So all of this is to assure customers of its reasonable pricing and as well as authenticity of the products or the jewelry items that it carries. So basically from here, we are able to learn and understand uh, Bluestone's marketing strategy and value proposition in detail. And of course, this deep dive can also be done for other jewelry brands or any other brand in any other category as well. So in summary, jewelry market in India is only bound to grow with around 5.4% growth rate annually. Again, importance of this metal culturally rising income levels and sprouting of online jewelry stores will only further aid this growth. Tanishk is market leader, but faces strong competition from lots of other growing players as well. Gold has traditionally ruled, but diamond jewelry purchase is on the rise as well. And given the category's increasing online shopping nature, where price comparisons, design variety, and authenticity proof are vital, marketers will need to refine their search marketing strategies for effective customer acquisition and find the USP, like Bluestone, for example, who is heavily investing in display ads that emphasizes affordable, smaller jewelry pieces along with authenticity. So with that, now let's move on to another growing category, which is beauty and cosmetics under the lifestyle umbrella. So we earlier saw that beauty industry as a whole has grown by around 9% year over year. And the main contributors to the category growth are brands such as Kind Life, which sees uh, uh, you know, a massive increase of about 800 percentage points, Momsco and Minimalist, all of them showing triple or double digit growth. Kind Life is showing even more strong growth in October with 2.2 million visits to its site. And Kind Life is a, is a website or a brand that hosts Korean skincare and also toxin-free and organic skincare uh, on its site, meaning it caters to consumers who are conscious about the ingredients they put on their face and skin. Nika remains the category leader with close to 12 million visits per month on an average, but growth-wise, it's stagnant as other booming players are taking away the growth shares. Also, Reliance's Tira Beauty, which is uh, shown over here on the right-hand side, is growing at a really strong rate and will soon be giving tough competition to Nika. As, uh, and, and of course, other similar players as well. So it will be interesting to track Tira's progress over months and weeks via similar web data and look into its marketing strategies more deeply to understand, you know, what are its success factors? So this is, again, one uh, brand and an e-commerce beauty platform to watch out for in future. Um, now, even for beauty category, if we look into demographics, we are seeing that males are now visiting beauty and skincare category sites more than before, which, again, reflects their increasing awareness about skincare, grooming, and also their willingness to spend on such items. Kind Life and Beardo are some of the brands that male tend to visit more often to explore and purchase products. Minimalist sees more penetration amongst 18 to 24 year old, according to similar web data, which again is probably due to their affordable price point of the product ranges that they carry. Also, you know, if you look at what's the demand trend uh, looking like within uh, the beauty and cosmetics category, then it looks like with the advent of skincare influencers, affordable beauty brands, social media, and short form videos like YouTube shots and Insta Reels, we are seeing that Indians are now much more aware about the skincare regime as skin actives like vitamin C, salicylic acid, retinol are being searched more often along with sunscreen, reflecting the rising sophistication of Indian consumers when it comes to skincare. Now, Let's see how beauty and cosmetic brands are acquiring online traffic and customers to their websites. So both Nika and Purple are putting efforts in optimizing SEO as most of the traffic comes from organic search. Mama Earth and My Glam seems to be investing in paid search ads while Kind Life, if you remember, 
in the previous slides, uh, I mentioned that has been growing in uh, online traffic share. It's also is kind of reflected over here because it looks like they're increasing their focus on all the marketing channels, particularly in display ads and referrals, as it shows quadruple digit increase in traffic versus last year. And if we deep dive to further understand what is Kind Life focusing on or what is causing its growth, we see that searches for Korean brands such as Beauty of Joseon and its sunscreen, CauseRx brand and its very popular snail mucin product, also Indian brand Foxtail and its sunscreen, a couple of the several products that are popular on its site. So it seems like Kind Life has established itself as a leader in Korean brands availability in India, which of course, are currently quite high in demand, and it is able to capitalize on this trend quite well. And if you look at the messaging Kind Life shows in the display ads, then the focus is on healthy, clean, and kind living. Also, availability of multiple brands on its website is showcased in its display ads, which is again to attract you know, visitors to come to its site to explore the various products that it hosts. And if we look at an overall level, which keywords or which trends are driving traffic to which beauty brands, we see that salicylic acid face wash is quite coveted among most platforms like Nika, Mama Earth, and Kind Life, indicating strong demand in the market. And also it indicates that the need for brands to further optimize the search strategy in both organic and paid angles to be able to increase their share of voice for this product or other such in-demand products. Also, My Glam, if we look at it, has a USP of its beauty blog on latest fashion trends. So over here, like it seems like wolf cut hairstyle seems to be driving quite a lot of traffic to its website. So this also gives ideas to beauty brands to build on relevant content to keep up with the latest trends on skincare or hair care to grab more eyeballs. And further building on content ideas for beauty or cosmetics category, lots of question queries related traffic is received by MyGlam because of the beauty blog. And some of the content or questions are mostly around improving skin tone and hair, <laughs> which indicates that fairness is still a little bit of an obsession in India and also hair fall, which of course is a global topic quite resonant among Indians as well. So this level of data helps to understand consumer trends and demand, which can then help brands to strategize and incorporate relevant content in their marketing campaigns to attract customers. So in order to summarize the beauty industry and cosmetic category, let's just quickly touch upon certain key points. So beauty industry is thriving and growing, contributed by rising income, in India, increasing awareness via social media, young population, and availability of numerous local and international brands, leading to a mature skincare and beauty trend among Indians. Nika is currently leading as an e-commerce beauty platform, but faces tough competition from lots of other growing players, for example, Tira. And it is a crowded space, especially with lots of celebrities coming up with their skincare brands like Deepika Padukone's 82 East and Nayantara's Nine Skin. Thus, attracting customers via quality beauty content can be one way of getting them to visit their site and probably convert as well. Because of this crowded space, beauty brands will need to find their USP and stick with it in order to win over customers. So with that, let's move on to another lifestyle category that is fashion and apparel. And then over here, what we are looking at is all the brands in the fashion and apparel category that are leading or occupying higher market share within the online space. So Mintra leads the pack in this category. And even though it sees decline versus last year, but from first half of this year to October, it has seen substantial increase in traffic, going from 66 million visits to 100 million visits, which means it continues to grow this year, despite of decline versus last year. It's trying to make up for the loss that it has suffered in first half of the year during the second half of this year. Ageo seems to be on a declining path somehow with only 29 million visits seen in October. Nika Fashion occupies third spot. So it is already a leader in the beauty and cosmetic space, but it is now 
also competing in the fashion space. And it's also seeing a good year over year or month over month increase going to about 16 million visits in October itself. Foreign brands like H&M and Nike also see growth, but the biggest growth versus 2022 is shown by menswear brand Snitch by around 500 points. And if you remember, it was also in the news for getting a big funding in Shark Tank India TV show. Foreign brands like Puma seems to be on a decline in India with very little growth seen in October. Some upcoming players seem to be, uh, which is shown on the right-hand side over here, like New Me, Shop Looks, Kadi India, and Crocs. Again, these are some of the brands that Mintra, the market leader, might need to keep a close eye on. In terms of demographics to visitors, uh, to fashion and apparel uh, industry websites, Visitors are more likely to be male versus female. However, brands like Nike Fashion, Urbanic, and H&M, and even Marks & Spencer do get significant proportion of female visitors as well. And they are more likely to be in the cohort of 18 to 34 year old. So in terms of targeting, this is the age group to focus on for fashion and apparel players. And the similar web data can help to deep dive to see which brands are doing a better job in attracting the segment or is, for example, changing strategy from targeting mature age groups to younger ones like we see over here for Nike Fashion and Urbanic. So all in all, you can keep real-time track of a brand's demographic targeting strategy and see if you need to, you know, mitigate an action accordingly, uh, depending on, you know, where your competitors are now focusing on. And for fashion uh, industry, if you look at what are people searching for within the category, then some of the products sort of stand out, like the oversized T-shirt, cargo pants, sneakers, like Air Jordan, Air Force One, looks to be more popular and trending. So looking at search trends helps brands to also aid in their product strategy and even stocking to keep up with the marketing demand. Now, let's look at how these fashion and apparel players are acquiring online traffic to their websites. So Mintra, due to its high brand awareness, gets more direct and organic search traffic. In fact, even Snitch is getting a lot of organic search traffic, which indicates its growing popularity. And they are also focusing on other channels as well, as you can see from the growth in its online traffic via display ads, the referrals, and social media at the bottom table. But a lot of other brands such as Nike, Fashion, Urbanic, and AGO are focusing on attract attracting traffic via investments in paid search or PPC ads as well. So this then tells that fashion and apparel players about marketing strategy of their competitors and how they're optimizing their budget for increasing footfall on their website and if it's leading to any sort of growth uh, in their uh, actual customers or conversions. And um, if we remember, Snitch looked like an interesting brand, which has seen you know more than or close to 500% growth in traffic versus last year. So let's deep dive a little bit into uh, like which products or keywords uh, you know is helping them in their growth, and that would of course help in understanding their strategy a bit more. Then we see that T-shirts, shirts for men, or printed shirts, is what is most popular on their website and is driving growth for them in terms of online traffic as well as conversion. So this again is an example of a brand which has its own USP and is you know, not trying to do or sell everything under the sun. And that is also contributing to its success that they are, that they are sort of focused on a very particular section, which is menswear. And then if we want to learn a little bit more about Snitch's winning display ad strategy, and if you look at the data month-wise, then we can see that from July, 2022 onwards last year, traffic to the websites via display ads has been rising. And they're using publishers like YouTube, Crickbuzz, and Hindustan Times to place their ads to attract maximum eyeballs. Also, their creatives focus on inciting immediate call to action via promotions such as buy two, get one free, use of promo code, or highlighting low prices for its shirts, which makes it easy for men looking for budget-friendly purchases to prompt them to visit their website. So it gives a it gives us a, a good view of you know what are the kind of tactics that Snitch is applying in order to drive maximum traffic to their website. And earlier we saw that in the fashion industry trends there is a 
solid demand for sneakers and shoes. And even for branded search like Nike, Converse, Birkenstock, or Puma, the traffic we can see is directed to Mintra, Nike, Fashion, and Geo. So this indicates strong competition for share of voice for these brands' products among these fashion e-commerce players. So for example, Nike Fashion can keep track of which keywords are giving maximum share of voice to which competitor on a weekly or monthly basis and accordingly tweak and optimize their search strategy or invest in paid search to increase their market share. Because for you know, right now, as we saw, they are at the third position. So for a brand to then move up the ladder, such kind of data, keeping a close eye on, um, you know, what is the popular product or, you know, how are uh, competitors designing their search strategy that is, you know, directing a lot of traffic to the websites. Understanding these nuances can help to better their own uh, search strategy campaign as well. So in summary, India's fashion and apparel sector is designated to grow at around 12% growth rate an increasing willingness to experiment with new brands and a growing desire to wear aspirational brands is leading to this as well. E-commerce, of course, has democratized access to fashion, including fashion brands. Also, young audiences have a greater propensity to try and buy from new brands. As they definitely constitute a growing share of online fashion purchases, the market for digital disruptors amongst the Indian uh, fashion and apparel sector is bound to grow. Mintra, as we saw, occupies the largest market share in the online space, but faces growing competition from Nike Fashion, Urbanic, and also foreign brands like H&M and Nike. Snitch is a very fast-growing menswear player, which can be seen as a result of an increasing investment in various marketing channels like paid search, display ads, and even SEO optimization. And also having a focused product range that is menswear is also helping its case. So now we have covered quite a bit on lifestyle categories, but now let's take a look into another growing category that is consumer electronics. So we are shifting gears a bit over here. And of course, we will also look at traffic trends year over year within the consumer electronics industry. So what we are seeing over here is that Samsung leads with an online market share by about 80%. And it shows year over year growth as well. However, in October, there is some softening seen while Apple is continuing to increase its share. Homegrown brand Lava Mobiles has grown by a whopping 900 percentage points in online traffic versus 2022. Reliance Digital and Vijay Sales, despite fierce competition from Chinese brands, also see growth. Many Chinese brands experience decreased online traffic in first half of the year, which perhaps could have been triggered by increased government scrutiny into these brands or intense competition in the category. But again, in October 2023, we do see Chinese brands like Realme and OnePlus show increase in online traffic in India. This view then, you know, of course, helps brands to keep month on month track in growth of self brand or competitor brands as online traffic and searches are a reflection of actual market shares as well. In terms of demographics, consumer electronic sites are predominantly visited by males, again, in the age range of 18 to 34 year olds. Those in the more younger segment, that is 18 to 24 year olds, visit tends to visit real me site more often, while the more mature age group, which is 25 to 34 year old, they are more likely to visit Reliance Digital or Vijay Sales or OnePlus and gadgets now blog more than the other age groups. So clearly, the more mature age group is a little bit more into reading reviews and exploring more options. So this similar web data showcases targeting strategy of different brands via their value proposition and price range, and also helps brand to figure out or gauge competition in a particular age segment. In terms of uh, non-branded search, mobile devices are the key subcategory within a consumer electronics that are in demand, of course. Apple products such as iPhone, iPad, and MacBook are in demand as well. And even after the launch of iPhone 15, we see that there are search trends around older models like iPhone 14 and 13, which is again likely due to consumers wanting to get the older models at a cheaper price, which is 
then again, important for, uh, you know, e-commerce players in this category uh, to strategize their uh, strategy on, along the product angle and for stocking purposes as well. Redmi 12 and Moto Edge 40 Neo are also searched quite often in the latest months. While in first half of the year, we saw Samsung S23, Lava Agni 2, and Redmi Note were some of the other products that were in demand as well. Now, let's look at some marketing strategies used by the electronic brands to acquire online traffic. And direct and organic search are key channels in this category as well. In order to attract traffic, Samsung, even though, you know, in spite of higher brand awareness and a globally a very well-known brand, seems to still heavily invest in paid search. While Lava Mobile's strong year-over-year -year growth can be attributed to its increasing investments across most marketing channels, but even more particularly for in display ads. So if, if we deep dive a little bit more into Samsung, and we see that apart from S23, traffic to Samsung side is also driven via search for their washing machine, fridge, and Galaxy Watch. It is also interesting to note that iPhone 13 search is driving majority traffic to Samsung website, indicating that Samsung is investing in conquesting strategy, which is where you target competitors' branded keywords to drive traffic to your site. So again, it shows Samsung aggress aggressiveness to increase market share in India. Most question queries like how to back up Android phone or what is AMOLED display, et cetera, within the consumer electronic category space are also driving traffic to Samsung website. So it looks like, you know, they are investing quite a bit in optimizing their uh, SEO as well, along with investing in paid search ads. Now, if you remember, Lava also saw a massive 900 points increase in traffic or growth versus last year. So let's see a bit more of how they are able to achieve this growth. So most of their marketing efforts are towards promoting Agni 2 phone model in first half of the year. Some of its top referral or affiliate partner driving traffic to its site are pricebefore.com, crickbuzz, and gadget360.com. So it tells which other sites are helping them drive traffic to their website. Also, the messaging in search and display ads focused on showcasing India's first MediaTek 7050 processor, which uh, is a technology that helps in capturing high quality pictures. And they also highlight in display fingerprint sensor, which is a technology which helps to unlock the phone in just 0.24 seconds. So they are trying to entice the consumers by highlighting their USBs in latest tech. And as a brand or as a media agency, you are then able to dissect my marketing strategies of different brands in one place or in one platform, which is similar web. So what you're seeing over here is basically a deep dive into uh, Lava Mobiles as a brand. But of course, this kind of analysis and this kind of information can also be uh, gathered for you know, any brand or any competitor that you're trying to uh, understand and deep dive. So quickly summarizing what we just went through for consumer electronics category, it is definitely on a path of growth in India. And of course, it's fueled by increased household demand, lifestyle shifts, better credit options, and rising disposable incomes. And it's also you know, further evident by Xiaomi now expanding its production footprint in India. So it looks like you know, a lot of um, mobile players, especially Chinese, uh, look, Chinese brands are you know, continuing to invest in India to, in order to harness all the factors that are aiding uh, the growth in this category. Samsung leads with 80% online traffic market share and Apple trails in second. And then we see that Reliance Digital and Lava Mobile are also in the top five list, suggesting local brands are also leading in India. Top Chinese brands face decline in the first half of the year, possibly due to top strong competition or tax evasion allegations, but there are again seeming to be on a path of growth in the second half of 2023. So now let's move on to the last section of our session today, which is looking into the fintech sector. So before we move into the fintech sector specifically, let's begin by looking at the online traffic growth levels 
of the overall finance industry and not just specifically fintech. And what we are seeing is that the overall finance industry is seeing a robust growth of about 8% versus last year. And even more so during July, where it saw about 20% increase in its uh, um, you know, website visits versus 2022. And now in October, the entire finance industry websites have seen close to 1.1 billion visits in India, indicating that India's finance sector is bustling and booming. Now, let's specifically deep dive into the fintech space within the broader finance umbrella. So if you look at a couple of uh, brands or players that are leading in fintech space, then Zeroda stands out as the market leader. But it does see some softening in year-over-year -year, uh, monthly traffic numbers. However, investment platform Grow sees close to 20% growth in first half of the year and is continuing to grow in October as well. In fact, in October, Policy Bazaar and PhonePay are also seeing growth in online traffic to their sites. Players such as Navi, Incred, and DMI Finance are showcasing triple-digit growth in unique visitors, reflecting massive potential for fintech players in the Indian market. In terms of gender and age makeup of those who visit fintech websites, fintech uh, traffic mostly seems to be coming from males who are in the age range of 25 to 34 year old who also constitute the 43% of total audience. However, among those aged 18 to 24 year olds, the really younger segment, Paytm seems to be more popular than its counterparts, which is an advantage for Paytm, as these users, the 18 to 24 year olds, are likely to be their customers even when they grow older, thus forming a loyal customer base. Also, although it is a male-dominated industry, payment solutions like Razorpay, PhonePay, Paytm, and Cashfree see more female visitors visit with other um, players. So again, similar web data helps to give you a very clear picture of gender and age affinity of customers among fintech, fintech players, and also gives direction in terms of like which gender or age group to target to increase market share. And if you look at what are people searching for within the category, then Indians seem to be searching for easy to use calculators for assessing their fixed deposits, income tax, provident fund, brokerage, or gratuity. Credit card and electricity bill payment is also trending in the industry. All of this gives an idea on which or what content to showcase in order to optimize search strategy by the fintech players or what products to build and innovate in order to appeal to consumers. And here it looks like simple to use financial online tools are in demand among Indian consumers. Now, lastly, even for fintech players, let's look at that online traffic acquisition strategy. So two main channels through which visitors are coming to the fintech websites are direct and organic search, which again reinforces the fact that for any brand, the basic tenets are to build on their own brand awareness, and to do continuous SEO optimization, which is also important to drive traffic to its site and increase actual market share. Billdesk and Razorpay are depending more on partnerships or referrals with other sites to drive traffic to their own site. And if you look at the bottom tables, which reflect uh, you know increase in traffic per channel per brand versus last year, we see that Zerodha in 2023 seem to be investing a lot more on PPC or search ads as traffic via this channel has grown by almost 3,000% for them. Grow, which we earlier saw, uh, showed double-digit growth in online traffic, seems to have focused on referrals and also search ads in 2023 to aid its growth. So let's see which keywords is Erota investing in in order to drive traffic to its site. So it seems to be a bit more uh, around brokerage, calculator, and coin, while Grow gets most paid traffic from fixed deposit, PPF, recurring deposit, car loan calculator searches. We also see Paytm leading and getting traffic from movie-related keywords. So we do see here that each of the players have a lead in specific areas and have a specific USP for which they are known for or you know, are uh, building their um, campaigns around. And if we remember, we saw Grow is focusing on referrals to increase traffic. 
And if we deep dive on the right hand side, what we can see is that it seems to be partnering with Sensible and Digio, among other um, players to garner traffic to its site. So again, for other brands, it gives an idea if they should also partner with these sites uh, in order to generate more traffic to their own website or find other attractive referral partners or affiliate partners, which can boost its own traffic share. And this again, such kind of data or such kind of deep dive uh, is possible through the similar web pl platform. So all in all, to summarize, fintech industry is bound to for you know massive growth and is expected to hit one trillion in 2026, one trillion dollars. Government support, favorable regulations, and expanding digital public infrastructure are all drivers contributing to India's fintech growth. Zeroda has quite high brand awareness and is also ramping up its paid search activities to maintain its leadership position, while Grow is growing at a rapid pace. Popular online searches in the category are around financial calculators for fixed deposits, recurring deposits, PPF, income tax, brokerage, etc. So primary challenge for players in the fintech space would be to ensure user retention and deliver high-end user experiences to succeed in a competitive market. Also achieving sustainable profitability and ensuring a regulatory compliant business model would be critical, critical for success for FinTech players in India. So with that, we have you know, come to the tail end of our session today. So just very quickly summarizing what are the, you know, some of the really top level learnings we saw in today's session. So when a brand has a USP, or a fo focused product line, regardless of the category it's in, it's more likely to be successful. And then brands that focus on quality as well as affordability are the ones that we are seeing quickly rising in the market. We also see how continuous investments in online marketing channels and tracking competitor strategy can lead to growth in online traffic share and hence conversions and hence actual market shares as well. Thus, it becomes even more essential for brands to use data to take informed decisions for, you know, be it branding strategy, product, or marketing strategy. So data should be a bedrock for all of your strategies that you're designing for your brand. And of course, there is no room for guesswork. So just very quickly touching upon, um, you know, similar web and what else can be done. So in short, what you can get with SimilarWeb is pretty <laughs> unparalleled, like online behavioral data. So what SimilarWeb does is it translates million of digital touch points and turns them into meaningful insights across different stages of consumer journey, some of which we got a glimpse of in today's session. So from Google and social media search at the beginning of the journey to the actual purchase on marketplaces or brand sites, we or enable you as a brand to always be on top of the changing consumer trends. You also get a full view of the market. So you are able to capture the entire digital landscape. So from desktop to mobile web to mobile apps across 190 countries. So wherever the consumer is and whatever device they are using, similar web captures it. It also allows you at the end of the day to compare apples to apples because all the data you need on the digital world is coming from one vendor or one platform. And I think another one of our biggest strength is our ability to get as granular and you know insights to be as actionable as possible. So you can zoom in and out of the digital world. You can look at the entire market or analyze a single website or a couple of websites or a single keyword or product pages. So you can be much more precise and uncover unique hidden insights. And of course, act on them as soon as possible. And lastly, uh, platform updates data daily. So again, as mentioned earlier, it gives you a chance to act fast and capture demand and you know mitigate your competitors in real time. So how can you access our data? It really depends on your need. So we, of course, have a self-serve platform, uh, which is our SaaS platform, but we also offer managed services in case you don't have the necessary resources for, for example, reporting. Uh, needs, or you can also access our data through API and plug it in your internal systems or visualization tools or dashboard. And um, 
if you really have very specific and custom needs, then we also have our consulting arm called advisory services, which will work with you to customize a solution from our data source to answer your key business questions. So many customers of ours use multiple delivery methods and each method of course is suitable for different business objectives and teams. So for example, you might have a need for an API for like one monthly number you need, but you know you would need to use the SaaS platform for weekly analysis, or you would use our managed services or advisory services for quarterly custom projects. So depending on the business objective or the business need, you can you know pick and choose the solution that you would need for, uh, um, around the similar web data. And with that, we have come to an end of our session. Thank you so much for your patience. I know like we covered quite a bit, like uh, three lifestyle categories, consumer electronics and FinTech as well. And of, of course we touched upon um, a bit on similar web as well. So you can download the report via the QR code that is displayed here. And of course, needless to say, feel free to reach out to us after the session if you would like to know more about similar web or test it out. And now, we can open the floor for any questions that you might have.